Welcome back. In the last episode, we installed ROS or Rollout Operating System. In this episode, we're going to be going over all the basic functionalities of ROS and how that relates to programming autonomous drones. But before that, I want to mention that I'm structuring this video series so that it gets you up and running and developing your own autonomous applications as quick as possible. So I'm going to be skipping over a couple things with relation to the to the basics of ROS. So if you really want an in-depth explanation of ROS, I would go ahead and check out the tutorials on the ROS website. But as I've noticed from teaching this for the last couple of years, people start to get a little bored with the ROS tutorials um, because they don't see how this, how it immediately relates to building your own autonomous drone application. So I'm doing my own version of the ROS tutorials, but with uh, a better relation to autonomous drones. So that being said, let's get into it. Like in the previous episodes, the follow along link is in the description. So the first thing we're going to need to do is install the ROS plugins for Gazebo. Basically what these do, do is it takes all the data from Gazebo and publishes it on ROS topics so that you can use it in your own applications. So if you installed the ROS desktop full in the last episode, you won't need to run this command, but if you installed the base or the desktop version, then you'll need to run this command and make sure that these are installed. So you'll do that by doing control C, opening up a terminal, and then pasting it in as follows. So I installed the ROS desktop full in the last version, so there was no ROS packages for me to install since I already had them installed. So I'm going to be showing you guys how the ROS um, commands work by using the simulator that we've been using in the last couple tutorials. So we're going to launch that world by running ROS launch IQ sim runway dot launch. And we'll just give it a second and the world should pop up as it's doing right now. So once again we have our runway with our drone and we're going to be flying it around and using some of the ROS commands um, and showing you how they work. But the next thing we want to do first is we're going to um, start up the Articopter software in the loop. So I've tried to make it easier for you guys um, to run the software in the loop without ha basically by making it um, by making the script so that you don't have to run this command every single time you want to run the software in the loop because that's that's a lot to type or you have to go back and find this command and copy and paste it. So what I've done is I made this little script called start software in the loop uh, dot sh, and we can, and uh, when you run that, it basically runs this command. So what I recommend is you go ahead and copy this out of the scripts folder in the IQ sim, and then it'll and then put it in your home folder so that you can just do dot slash start software in the loop, and it should just start up. So uh, first thing is go ahead and copy this from the scripts folder. So now it's in our home folder and we can just do dot slash start and then tap complete it. Boom. Perfect. Now that the simulation has loaded, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start teaching you guys different ROS command line tools. So uh, go back here and scroll down and the first command that I'm going to teach you guys is the ROS topic list command. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to show us all the different topics that ROS is currently publishing. So let's go ahead and run that in a new terminal. And copy this and paste it in. ROS topic list. So we see that these are all the different topics that are currently being published. We have some data from Gazebo and then we have some data from the webcam on the drone. Um, so this is all uh, fine and dandy. Uh, that we can see the different topics, but what is actually in the topics? So um, to see what's in the topics, we can use the uh, the command called ROS topic echo. And to show this, I'm going to go ahead and echo out the gazebo model states um, topic. All right, so you can see a bunch of different data is being published. It's being published over and over again. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and take a little deeper look. So I'm gonna go ahead and like expand this this terminal a little bit a uh, little bigger so that you can see more of what I'm talking about. So we can see that there's kind of a tree of data here. Uh, there's like name, oppose, twist. What's the twist? Uh, basically, the twist is like your velocities, the pose is your position, and then the name is the name of the models. 
Um, and so this uh, specific message is kind of structured interestingly. So you have your first uh, model and that corresponds to the first entry uh, within the pose and the first entry within the twist. Um, and so what we can see is a true position of all the different models in Gazebo. So the next thing we want to do is like see how this changes uh, when we actually start moving our models around. So to do this, uh, let's go ahead and make the drone take off and fly to 15 meters. So like in the last tutorial, if we can go if we go over to the map proxy terminal, we can go ahead and type mode guided and then we can arm the throttle and then type take off and then a certain height which I'm going to do 15 meters this time. So now if we go back to gazebo, we should see that the drone is taking off and flying to around 15 meters. So how does that correspond to our ROS uh, information? So if we go back here and if we do ROS topic echo gazebo model states, uh, we should see that uh, we're around 15 meters. So Z position is 14.25 meters. So, I mean, it's close to 15. It may not actually always be exactly 15. And that is actually an artifact of um, basically two different reference frames and position estimates. So this is actually a true estimate because it's just uh, getting the exact position of the drone um, from the simulation. Um, the drone is actually operating off of an estimated position and this position is estimated based off of the different sensor readings and the sensor readings have a much different um, error associated with them um, just inherent with the the sensors and then there's some uh, truncation errors with all the math that goes on with formulating the position and orientation estimates um, so you won't you, you will pretty much never have your actual position um, be exactly the same as your uh, estimated position um, but we try to make this as close as possible right so in real life we will never actually have an actual position um, we will only ever have the estimated position so when we write all our software we want to be using the estimated position from the different sensors um, so we need to get this by uh, accessing the position that's estimated in the computer. So how do we do this? Uh, we're going to use Mavlink and Mavros. In the last episode I had you install Mavlink and Mavros and basically what Mavlink is is it's a communication protocol for micro aerial vehicles hence Mav. And the reason this protocol came about is because uh, with drones, we're typically communicating over uh, radio signals, and these radio signals uh, can only transmit a little bit of information. So we want to have the communication protocol be as light as pos possible. Um, however, with robotics, like we usually want it to be more modular and, and have more commonality, so that when we mix uh, mix and match different sensors and robots, um, it's easier to use um, the different sensors and software packages on different robots. So that's why we want to use ROS. And so MavROS basically takes the MavLink messages and uh, translates them into a more modular um, message container. So now I'm going to show you how to launch MavROS and get the MavLink uh, data so that we can uh, use it in our own applications. Alright, so to launch MavROS, we're going to end up coming back to uh, the tutorial guide and then we're going to go ahead and run this command ROS launch iqsim apm.launch. So control C and then go ahead and open this up again and paste it in and this should go ahead and start all the different uh, MathRos topics. So if we open up another terminal and run ROS topic list, we should again see more um, topics this time. And these are all the different MathRos topics. So all this data is the data that's being, um, being manipulated on the flight controller. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at one of the uh, topics on here. And this topic is going to be the position of the drone, which we can access by doing ROS topic echo, MavROS, global position, slash local. So control C, and then control shift 
v and then we can go ahead and run that um, so once again uh, we're seeing a bunch of different uh, messages being published um, and the different positions and so this uh, position is actually a lot closer to 15 because this is um, the position that the control loop is trying to optimize for um, and this this is the position that's being estimated from all the different sensors. Um, so finally, the last couple things that I want to show you is the Rostopic dash v which ends up giving you more information about the actual message that is being published. So let's go ahead and run that. So what uh, this does is basically tells you what uh, what type of message it is and we can see that it's a nav message slash odometry message um, and so basically this command is going to be uh, pretty useful when we're trying to take this data and put it into the programs that we're going to write um, so we can go ahead and see the structure um, by running this other command ross message show and then the type of message it is so let's go ahead and get that back and then run it and so basically what this is showing is how all the dif data, different data is structured. So uh, we can see that there's a header with the timestamp, and then uh, there's a geometry message uh, with a pose and a position. And basically what all this structure is, is it's a bunch of different objects built on top of each other. So the most basic um, uh, type of data here is a float 64, right? Which is just your normal uh, float, right? And then you have another ROS, uh, ROS uh, container, which is a uh, point, right? And we're calling this point position, and that's made of, of X, Y, Z. And then within um, point, we have uh, something called geometry message pose, and that's made of, of a point and a quaternion, and that's made of that. And so you can kind of uh, see how ROS messages um, will be structured. They just have a bunch of different uh, containers with them and whatnot. So basically in this video I just showed you a couple different uh, ROS commands that are really useful for debugging and figuring out how to in interface the different data into your own uh, programs. So in the next couple of videos I'm going to be showing you guys how to script the drone and how we can use this information uh, to do interesting things with our drone. Um, and so until then, uh, stay classy.